Hello, my name is Georg Rumpf from Kruger Rumpf Winery here in the Nahe, in the most, most northern part of the Nahe in Münster Samsheim. Um, I'm the winemaker, the person who is responsible for the vineyards and also since two years ago, I'm the owner of the winery. Um, I should I want to tell you a few things about the um, last vintage, 2020 vintage, um, which was for us here in the winery without any doubt a huge challenge. Um, we, what, we, what I would describe the, the vintages as a very classical straight vintage like it used to be in the 90s here in, in Germany. Um, we started um, with a butt break um, normal in, in, in the end of um, April, uh, in the end of um, March. Um, so we had a normal start into the, to the um, yeah, in, into the season with everything but burst and um, all these things. Um, and it started with a, with a tri period in the beginning and then it started in May with a lot of, a lot of rain. And um, we've been so happy about these rainfalls because in the last years, always the spring, it was way too dry. And um, we were, we were been absolutely happy that, um, that everything was, green and it looked fantastic and um we've been happy because all our greenings they've been flowering and but it sadly it not stopped raining at the right time so um from our perspective especially with that um moving um to organic or with the transition to organic this um it was it, it was definitely a challenge um, to to have everything handled at the right time. So um, we had a lot of water. I repeat myself. Um, so we had to um, be very focused on what we're doing outside in the vineyard. So this year it was much more important to do the work at the right time. Um, we had the, the 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 benefits that we working for almost. 20 years with a lot of cover crops during the winter season and during the spring season. And um, so we had the chance to let all these cover crops during the whole vegetation, um, during the whole um, season in, in the vineyards. So um, for us, even in the steep slopes, we could always work in it because um, we, what we're trying to bring now to our system, even with organic, um, to bring a um, regenerative um, Landwirtschaft, which means regenerative, regenerative farming. Re so, regenerative, regenerative farming, yeah? Ex exactly, exactly. So um, almost no working, um, if it's not really necessary, um, working with the soil, what we're doing is um, bringing out manure just to feed um, the soil, working with a lot of cover crops. And um, this, especially in a season like this, it, it helps us in a, in a absolutely perfect way. Then during the whole season, always wet days, um, perfect conditions to be honest for the, for the, for the plants. Um, the, everything was green and, and healthy, but we had to take care massively of, um, of spraying operation. If you organic, um, then you only have those um, two or three things you are allowed to spray. And um, you always have to be there right on time. And there's no chance that there is a, if, if, you, if you're too late, then it's too late for the whole season. Um, so it was a lot of work outside in the vineyards, especially um, the, the, all the spraying, spraying operations. But I do believe with that um, cover crops, with that manure, we do spraying um, a bit of compost tape, but it's, um, in this, situ in this situation with that heavy, heavy impact um, of rain this year, um, you have to do something. And um, so we moved with pretty healthy vineyards um, through the, the, the whole season. Um, flowering um, in the mid end of June. Um, so a lot of work during this time. And then in the beginning of August, the weather turned and um, um, we had some pretty, pretty well, but not too warm end of the season from the, from, from the heat. So it was something which was 2020 back to normal. So with a lot of water, um, in my personal opinion, a little bit too much water, um, but 
everything was possible to handle as long as you had the, the team and the people to get all the work done at the at the right time. Um, we started picking at the end of September, almost um, two and a half, three weeks later than compared to um, the previous winter, just like 2020, 2019. So picking started at 25th of September. Um, Pinot Blanc, Pinot Gris, um, Pinot Noir, um, they been in an absolutely perfect condition. So um, especially the non-Riesling varieties, um, it was for, in my personal opinion, a year to pick ripe grapes with moderate um, amount of sugar. So, and also with the final wines, moderate amount of alcohol at the right time. Compared to the, to the previous years, we sometimes had to pick um, especially Pinot Blanc and Pinot, Pinot Noir just on that point when we're getting too much alcohol. And this year it was just absolutely ripe crepes um, with a low amount of, of sugar and so with a low amount of potential alcohol. Um, without any doubt, the um, acidity um, was higher um, due to because of the, the lower amount of um, um, sun and um, those we don't had any 35 um, degrees of Celsius um, days in the last season. Um, so we had definitely a higher amount of, of acid in the, in the last years. So what we've done, um, especially with Pinot Blanc and Pinot Gris, we did some um, malolactic fermentation, which I'm pretty happy if the malolactic fermentation happens during fermentation and if, not, if it's not a post-fermentation malolactic fermentation. So um, low impact on the wines by almost using no sulfur. So um, not avoiding malolactic fermentation, what we tried, we, we forced it. So um, a long skin contact to get potassium in the juice, um, long pressing times, especially with the, for, the, for the Pinot Noir, up, sometimes up to 18 hours press time to get more potassium in the juice um, to increase the pH. Um, so a lot of um, selective um, picking. Um, so most of the vineyards we have said last year, they've been um, pre-picked or pre-selected at least two up to three times. Um, so this is for the non-Riesling varieties. So um, from my perspective, this is something which is absolutely amazing is um, non-Riesling 2020. So from, from my, my side, especially like, like the Pinot Noir um, Rosé. Um, Riesling, um, this is um, where we had to invest a little bit more work last year. So um, I told you we pre-housed almost every vineyard um, once or twice. Um, so especially for the estate wines, we had to do some selections before um, the regular harvest time. So we started this year um, to do pre-selections of all vineyards at a sugar level of around about 75, um, 77 degrees of Uxler. So in this level, we removed almost 30% of all the crepes out of the windows because we realized that we three weeks later than in the, in the previous ye years. And so we wanted to reduce again, the whole yield in every vineyard. So from, from estate wine to cross Quebec. And, um, so we picked a lot of grapes out of our vineyards between 75 to, to 80 degrees, um, just the pre-picking. Um, and this allowed us to give the rest, the, the, the rest 70%, 60% of the grapes, another three up to four weeks outside in the vineyards. So um, Riesling um, in 2020, from my perspective, also similar to like, um, like um, the, the Pinot varieties, um, absolutely ripe crepes, but with a moderate amount of sugar and in combination with a, with a higher acid, but um, due to the, a lot of rain, um, we have high pH levels. Normally for us winemakers, it's, 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 we are happy if the pH are pretty low because then it's perfect without using any sulfur you don't get any problems with malolactic fermentations and in in the last year um due to the a lot of water and we have a lot of potassium in the juice 
there's a, we, we had a lot of nutrition in the in, in the grape juice. The pH level was higher than, for example, in 2020. So um, we have from the report from the lab or what we check in out by ourselves, the total amount of acid is higher, but the, the wines or the juice it tasted not such sour or not such high in acidity as the, the just the, the regular level of acid would, would tell us. So um, Riesling, um, pretty easy, picking healthy grapes at a potential alcohol level between 11 and a half up to 12 and a half percent. This is what happens in all of our vineyards. Um, it was this year amazing to see um, that the best sites really produce the best grapes. Um, this is not something which happened in the in the last in the last years. So um, a top site showed this year if it's really a top site. So if you have those um, late vintages um, and you have a steep vineyard um, with a absolutely amazing exposure. Um, you get ripe, healthy grapes. And if you have a, something like a plateau, which is a little more shaded or not, not a perfect exposed vineyard, you've seen a lot of differences in the, in the quality of the grapes. But for us, when we, this, this I think the huge, the huge um, benefit by farming um, grapes in these steep slopes, south facing hills, it shows in the vintage like 20, um, 2020, uh, 2021, sorry. And um, so a long picking time until um, the 20th of November, um, healthy grapes until the end. So this is the reason why we had no chance to um, do here in the winery, uh, but try the selection like a Berenholz laser, a Trocken Berenholz laser. We did some um, Aus laser um, and for me, we had some botrytis at the very early beginning, but this is what we sorted out by the pre-selection. So long ripening period, um, good health, healthy grapes, um, moderate in, in the sugar. From my perspective, something which is close to perfect, not a high yield, a very balanced yield, and, and that's, that's pretty okay. Then um, what happened in the cellar? Um, 20, um, the last vintage, um, we changed. Um, I wouldn't say we changed a lot. Um, it was pretty easy. It was not necessary to do any um, adding of sulfur. It was not, um, from my perspective, not necessary to do um, deacidification because we had that high amounts of, of pH. So what we did, um, we worked again with these very long pressing operations. So um, we pre do pressing circles or pressing times, sometimes up to um, 18, 20 hours. So um, it's similar like to what they do in, in Champagne, but the main difference is that we do um, a crushing of the crepes. So we, um, we crush the crepes before we put it on the press and then we do in a very long pressing time. And so we have um, skin contact um, during the time on the, on the, on the press and um, then clarification by, um, by gravity on um, putting the wines into stainless steel for the basic wines and for the concrete into um, old neutral barrels. Um, still, and this is this is definitely something which is different this year to to the previous years. Um, I've been a huge fan of a very straight, clear. I wouldn't say fast, but a very straight, clear fermentation. And this year, um, because of that fact, we're not using any more um, um, botrytis, uh, but um, we're not using any spraying to um, um, which could reduce the amount of yeast on the crepes. Um, we worked much more with um, um, spontaneous fermentation um, for all of our wines. Um, and this is something I realized, which was, I do believe, a huge benefit for this this vintage. If you have a, a little bit longer fermentation um, and you have a longer contact with the lees, it gives you just another extra, I would, what, what do we call it? Another scoop of butter in your, in your, in your soup, um, which 
with, the, with this longer time on the lease and during longer time in fermentation, it just bring a little more complexity and more body to the wines. And this is, I, I do believe this works pretty well um, with, the, with the last vintage. So um, still there are some barrels um, slowly fermenting in the cellar. Um, now in the mid of um, January, but this has um, happened due to, um, to cold um, time in, in December. Um, but it's, it's only a few ones. Um, what we just doing is the, the wrecking, um, what we're doing right now in the cellar, the wrecking of the first um, Pinot Blanc, Pinot Noir, and also for the estate Riesling. This is um, where we're doing the, the first wrecking and um, we'll start filtration these wines um, maybe in about one up, one up to two weeks um, because um, those wines just showing a very fresh, clear fruit. Um, they have a, a lot of structure in it without being too loud. And this is what I absolutely like with the, with the last vintage. So it's a combination of, of a clear fruit, um, not infected um, here in the winery by any botrytis. Um, we have a little bit higher pH um, in combination with a, with a high acidity, which sounds like a, like a strange thing, but it's, um, there is a lot of um, structure in the wines um, which buffer um, the, 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 the acidity. So um, I still do believe it was the right way um, just try to do almost nothing except of some malolactic fermentation for um, adjusting the acidity in the, in the last vintage. So um, what will happen, um, I, I talked about the, the tri wines, the Pinots, um, the GGs, some are still fermenting, but um, I'm super happy with the quality of these wines, especially Brook Berg is, is great this year. It was, um, this is what I told, um, those great sites like Burgberg, Peterburg, Abtai, they showed amazing in this in this year. Cabinet is, is, is just right on time. So we not had to pick the crepes by, um, by, the most, uh, by, the, by the sugar level. It was just perfect to pick cabinet crepes during the harvest time with a perfect pH, with the right amount of acid, um, not at the beginning when we normally do the selections for our pre-harvest. So cabinet was perfect. Spätlaser, um, to be honest, I have to see what we do with the, with the Spätlaser. I have a few barrels of Spätlaser in the cellar, but these, this is very classic style of Spätlaser. Um, Spätlaser picked only with 90 degrees of Oechsler and 91 degrees of Oechsler. So these are very straight, um, fine wines, um, not like those um, but try this bombs produced in the in the beginning of the 2000s, so just fresh, clear. Um, Auslaser, um, the Brookback Auslaser we have in the cellars, I do believe one of the best Auslaser I have ever produced, but it's just a tiny, tiny amount. And sadly, um, we tried to do ice wine this year, like, like many others. Um, and maybe I was a little bit too optimistic by not putting any electric fence around my vineyard. And the whole ice wine vineyard was destroyed by white boars. So um, I was too optimistic that this won't happen again. And so, um, yeah, this is what we done last year. I'm looking pretty happy or I'm, I'm pretty happy about the, the quality and hope, yeah, it turns to success. Excellent, thank you, Georg. 